fastest way to land the Omnithopter. In three, two, one. It doesn't fly in real life, but this beast feels like it really shouldn't fly in the game either, but it does, and it's addicting and way too much fun. Hello everyone, Eric here, and welcome back to another Ornithopter video. The past couple videos were about discovering the Dune expansion, rescuing that guy from the Coriolis Sandstorm, and then trying to make uh, the number one, actually, for that Hole in the Rock Touch and Go challenge. It was a lot of fun, but today I want to try something different. Uh, I actually want to help you guys out trying to get the most out of the Ornithopters, so the first part of the video is going to be about control mapping with my set. Um, I have the HOTAS X56. I'm going to be showing you guys control mapping for the Ornithopter on my throttle quadrant and how that helps me lower landing gear, toggle afterburners, fold the wings up, go into gliding mode, all within the reach of my thumb, which makes it very quick, very rapid, very easy to do, and to ultimately end up mastering the Ornithopter because power management is basically the most important thing I would say in terms of uh, mastering its maneuverability. So we'll put those keybinds into action. I'll go into the uh, cliff diving scenery area and then after we get done with uh, seeing how those keybinds work in action we'll go ahead and test them out at the most challenging touch and go challenge which is going to be the red chasm I believe it was at night which is going to be really fun and at the end I can show you guys how you can include sand into that add-on scenery as well in free flight so you guys can record videos just like this one has been recorded or take screenshots thumbnails if you guys are also content creators out there as well all right so here we are in controls options if you guys go to the search bar and just type orny into the bar you'll have all of the options for controlling the ornithopter here for you in the menu under miscellaneous if you search for it that way anyway uh, glide mode, dive mode, wings, brake, and afterburner are the four controls that I would configure into your HOTAS controller, anything that you may be using in order to fly. Um, what is important is the placement of these controls in that they are very easy to reach. Uh, for example, for me, I have the afterburner, the dive mode, and the glide mode all on the right side of my throttle quadrant accessible to my thumb. I can reach them all within milliseconds of each other and do them almost simultaneously when I need to, especially when it comes to fast approaches and touch and go challenges or just in general when you want to quicken your landing sequence. The wings brake is actually going to be on the other side of the throttle quadrant on the right side, this button right here. That is just importantly placed there because I actually use my speed brake on other aircraft in that place as well. So the wing brake and the speed brake, they go hand in hand and I'm already used to using the speed brake in this location, which is also something that's important to consider when flying uh, quickly. You want to make sure this is all memorized in muscle memory and just makes things a little bit more easier. All right, so here we are in the cliff diving touch and go scenery. Looks pretty awesome in free flight when you're able to get the weather configured correctly as well. So we're gonna head around this mesa right here and enter the pattern, I guess you could say, in the place where the touch and go challenge starts. And I'll show you guys how the bindings of these buttons down here where my thumb is work really well and efficient for flying this thing fast and maximizing its capabilities for maneuverability. Uh, Alright, so afterburner is still set. We're coming in a little bit faster than what we'd normally come in on the touch and go challenge. So we'll switch our afterburner off. Landing gear is coming down. Hit the brakes. We are at 11,000 feet MSL, so the air is a little bit thinner. But So we're going to hit the brakes a little bit earlier. As soon as you touch and go, gear is coming up. Afterburner is on. Wing fold, heading down. We'll 
click the wing pull button again to go back into normal mode. After burner's still on, we switch it off, landing gear's coming down, hitting the brakes. It is a little bit of a handful, but really satisfying once you get the hang of it. After burner coming on, landing gear up, heading straight back into the second lift. Not into the lift. Heading into gliding mode. Right over the dunes. Serve it a little bit. Alright, using the rest of the afterburner here, wings fold up, back into glide mode, landing gear coming down, glide mode off, afterburner's off. It is quite a bit of a handful to be honest, but it's super fun. By the way, I am holding that wing brake down the entirety of the landing sequence, but right at the end, right at the end, I'll come back up for you right over here. So right at the end, when I have that wing brake pressed, the descent rate doesn't come down as fast as you have it held down, but if you let it go, it drops. And then you press it again to slow it down. Oops, <laughs> lowered landing gear a little bit too late right there. But you can get the gist of how that wing brake and um, releasing it right before touchdown, or at least right when you get over your helipad, um, landing pad accelerates the process a little bit. Maybe gets that time a little bit quicker if that's your focus, but it also just makes for really fun, quick flying, agile, just altogether a thrill. All right, guys, it's the moment of truth, the canyon rush and the red chasm. As you can see in the world top 10, I actually just made this. I actually just set this score at 1 minute and 56 seconds, almost 57 seconds. There are just two legitimate times ahead of me here. Let's see if I can beat it. Obviously, we're not going to count those two up there. Those are obviously exploited. So we're just going to count Flowey PG as the person with the world record right now at the Canyon Rush. Let's do this. So we're going to be starting with the throttle set to 100%. Afterburner already turned on, of course. This is actually attempt number four, in case you wanted to know. Inside these caves About 450 knots, we put into glide mode to re Please reduce drag. To the tight horizontal opening at the end of the track. Just going down, glide mode's off, adverse off, hitting the brakes. Just two more landing pads. Just coming up. Afterburner is already set. 450 knots into glide mode. Instead of turning it into dive mode here, we bank to the right. So we keep it shallow here. Conserve afterburner a little bit. Into dive mode. Back into glide mode. Gears coming down, glide mode off, hitting the brakes. Right into the afterburner. Gears coming up. Here, instead of putting into glide mode, we'll leave it into normal flight mode. We don't really get above 450 knots here, because we also need to conserve the afterburner. Ghost is right there, I don't know. We'll have to see. Oh. Wasn't able to get him, but pretty close. That's four hundredths of a second. Not too bad, but you see how it works. All right, so just real quick, we are in free flight, flying over the red chasm scenery. I'll pull a little nav map over into the screen right now, put it into active pause so I don't hit the ground. And as you can see, I am over 
basically, yeah, the southeast side of the Sahara. Let's change the uh, map to see if we can write. Okay, so we are in South Sudan. Uh, latitude is 10 degrees north, 9 minutes, 19 point two, uh, point six two seconds north, 28 degrees, 30 minutes, 25 seconds east, in case you guys want to know how to fly into the um, red chasm in free flight. However, there is no sand. And if you want sand, it's not that difficult. Obviously, you're going to need to be on PC. You can't do this in Xbox, unfortunately. All you have to do is go to load and save, save to this PC, name it whatever you want to name it. Right now, I've named my previous flight Red Chasm Low Cloud Bank just because that's the weather preset I have. I already have it saved, but what you normally need to do Let's just uh, go ahead and save a new one. Save to this PC. Red Chasm Low Cloud Bank 2. And we'll save that. Go right back into load save. Go to load from this PC. Find that flight file that you just saved. Load Cloud Bank 2. Right click it. Open with. Go into your editor just once. Whatever you'd like to do. Whether it be always. And I'll bring this right over here. And as you can see under our main section, I'm not too familiar, unfortunately, with editing flight files or programming in general. However, I do know that here, right at the bottom of the main section, you need to type in menu, hierarchy, equal sign, D and E. And somehow it pulls code from somewhere, injects it into this flight file. Go ahead and save it. Exit. So this flight file has now been updated. Open it and just wait for it to load and you will see that in just a few seconds. Taking a little bit of time to load that new scenery in, but it looks great. It is exactly the scenery that we fly in in the missions and the time trials. It looks wonderful for screenshots or just flying it in general. I plan on definitely flying in the scenery again, not with just the ornithopter. There we go, check that out. My weather preset, still there. The time of day is exactly uh, what it was when I saved it. I just had to press control E because my engines were shutting down for some reason. But as you can see, the sand is there and it looks amazing and plus you can also land on it in case you didn't know with that glare I can't see that very well yeah we'll just stay in third person view here slower the landing gear we'll land it right on top of that dune wow I can't see anything due to that dust nice <laughs> so yeah when you want to take screenshots this is the ultimate location to do it at obviously check that out wonderful let's turn our toggle blur toggle blur on there it is thumbnail 101 <laughs> nice well yeah that's about it for this video if you guys got any value from it, which I'm sure you did, please hit that like or subscribe button. And if you have any comments, let me know down below. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.